Let's talk about the number one worst food for your heart. Hint, it's not sugar. I did a video on this before, but the problem is the food that I talked about before, um, it's not really in the average person's diet it, nearly as much as it used to be. And that was trans fats. Trans fats are really bad for us, but they ban that. So if we take away trans fats, what do you think would be the food that would be at the top of the list as far as destroying that inside of that artery? So let's see if you can guess and get it right, okay? Number one, it's a primary driver of heart disease. It creates potent and massive inflammation inside of your arteries. And also this food is directly correlated as far as the consumption and introduction into our food supply and the exact statistics of getting heart disease. I mean, they're on the same trend going up. Another thing that this food does very specifically to the inside of your arteries is it creates what's called oxidative LDL. Now, let me just explain what that means. Now, maybe you've heard that LDL is the bad cholesterol, but really the LDL is not bad until it gets modified. It changes. This particular ingredient that I'm going to tell you about in a minute goes into that LDL and it modifies it and it makes it so it can penetrate inside the artery wall and start the cascade of damage. And it's this repetitive chronic consumption of this thing that keeps this irritation or inflammation uh, going. And then you have a cascade of problems like uh, incomplete healing with proteins and cholesterol to the point where you're developing this plaque and that can break off, etc. But it really starts with this oxidative LDL. This food also increases the risk of getting a metabolic syndrome. What is that? That's a combination of several things. Uh, low HDL, high triglycerides, high blood glucose, belly fat, and also high fasting insulin and insulin resistance. Now, I will say there's certain studies that will show that consuming this food lowers the cholesterol. Okay, so you might think, oh, that's a good thing. But at the same time, it increases the risk of developing heart disease as well as increasing the risk of dying from heart disease. I'm going to put all that data down below. Now, it also causes lipid peroxidation. Now, what does that mean? Well, think about oxidation as something going rancid, something like rusting something and damaging it out. But also, this substance goes into the membranes of your cells, okay? Not just the arteries, but other tissues too. In the retina, it can go into the brain cells. It can create a lot of problems. One of the secondary uh, compounds that's created, I'm not going to get into the long name, but it's called HNE, which is a very, very toxic thing, and that can create neurodegeneration, cancer, heart disease like we already mentioned, and inflammation. Now, if we compare 2010 to 2013, there's been an increase of this by 135x. So that's a major increase in our bodies. This particular food is made with similar machines that they make petroleum products from. It's like an industrial product and it's in our food chain big time. They heat it at least five times. They run it through this uh, very toxic solvent called hexane to extract it and isolate it. So there's chemicals added, there's bleach added, there's other things to take the odor out. So basically it's void of anything living at all. It's also been known to increase clotting. It creates major oxidative stress, which basically is a, is a combination between high oxidation, that rancidity, that uh, rusting out, and low antioxidants. And by the way, this oxidative LDL, there's really two main ways to lower it. One is to decrease food, which I'm just about to tell you right now. But number two is to decrease smoking. That's right, smoking. Okay, so let me reveal what this is. You ready for this? Seed oil, seed oil. Now, you may have heard of vegetable oils, right? Like this right here. I don't know if you can see this. Vegetables, they have pictures of vegetables right here, right? This does not come from vegetables, right? Vegetable oil is really seed oil. It's from corn, canola. It's from cotton seed. They make it from soy. And what's really wild about this is that this oil is an unsaturated 
fatty acid, which means it's very, very unstable. It's susceptible to oxidation, which I just mentioned, especially to light, air, or oxygen, temperature. So here we have this product that's not in a dark bottle, and you can heat it. The problem is that this has already been oxidized because it's been processed. So it's a highly inflammatory food, and we use this in a lot of foods, okay? Not just in cooking, but in salad dressings, in our favorite products like this, in literally all of the ultra-processed foods. It's unfortunate now because if you're cooking at home and you've been watching any of my videos, you probably are using like either butter or coconut oil, avocado oil or olive oil, right? But when you go to a restaurant, they're going to use cheap oils to cook with. Now, I also looked at some research that said that uh, this polyunsaturated fatty acid, which is high in omega-6, is not bad for us, right? And I found a few studies that talked about that. And I want to kind of just dissect them because uh, the first study I want to talk about, it's called the Finnish uh, Mental Hospital Study. And this basically supported this theory that this unsaturated oil is heart healthy, right? But there's several flaws. In this study, they actually remove the trans fats. And so that leads to the question, uh, was it because you removed the trans fats or you added this? We don't know. Also, it wasn't randomized. You had people that smoked, people that didn't. You had people on medications, people with high blood pressure. So there's just too many flaws in that study. So I just want to take a little break and tell you, thank you so much for subscribing. I really appreciate all of my subscribers and even those that don't subscribe. But the problem is, even though you might subscribe to my channel, only 1% of all of my subscribers get notified. So I would really appreciate, it's not going to take much effort to press that bell if you subscribe. And if you haven't subscribed, subscribe and then press that bell as well. So that way you can continue to get this, uh, I think, really important information. Let's look at another study, Los Angeles Veterans Administration study. So with this one, it showed that it decreased the cholesterol by 13%, but no significant impact on heart attack and sudden death. So for this one, it doesn't say it improved the heart. It said there was no significant difference, but it wasn't randomized. So you have these groups that some smoke, some didn't. Some people drank, some people didn't. So if someone smoked, for example, they're going to eat up their vitamin E, and that's going to put them more at risk for getting uh, heart problems. But I'm going to put a good amount of research down below on more of a, a randomized control studies that you could see that give you um, more um, proof that this is damaging. So I really think this is an easy problem to solve. It's just an awareness thing. Reading labels, don't consume these oils. Instead of using some type of typical salad dressing, find one that doesn't have it. You're probably just going to have to use olive oil or some other type of dressing. Also, the condiments, right? You have to find a condiment that doesn't have the soy oil. It's in mayonnaise. It's in a lot of different sauces. And also, when you cook, I would use olive oil, butter, coconut oil, avocado oil, uh, lard. So as you can see, there's a lot of problem with this unsaturated fatty acid. It's very, very unstable. It's not like saturated fats that are stable that are very difficult to break up. This stuff right here is highly susceptible to becoming damaged and then creating oxidation. And so in the family of uh, unsaturated fatty acids, you have two different main categories. You have the omega-6 fatty acids, and then you have the omega-3 fatty acids. So this would be mainly omega-6, right? And we want like a one-to-one -one ratio. But the problem is when you get into canola oil and some of these other highly processed seed oils, that's like a 311 to 1 ratio, right? Very heavy on the omega-6. But in America, the ratio of omega-6 to omega-3 is roughly anywhere between 10 to 1 to 20 to 1, very heavy on the omega-6. And even in certain parts of the world, it can get up to like 50 to 1. So you have this massive amount of omega-6 that's kind of evading our cell membranes, creating all sorts of inflammation, not just in our arteries, but also going into the retina of the eye. So if someone tells you that this oil is not a problem for our bodies, it's fresh, no, it's not. It's badly processed, 
and this introduction into our bodies is directly correlated with heart disease. So here's the problem. Omega-6 and omega-3 are competitive, which means that you're going to have to get this omega-6 seed oils out of the diet and replace with omega-3, which is from the fish oils, the cod liver oil. You're going to get more of it when you have grass-fed meat, but we want to start increasing this omega-3 to counter the effects of the omega-6. Now, I don't want to get into the history of this, but wow, we just did a whole switch and we replaced saturated fats with seed oils. Thinking that was a smart move, it was not a smart move. Now people are waking up. It's insidious that it crept into a lot of our different foods and no wonder we're having so many problems. I think one of the mistakes early on was because it lowered cholesterol, we assumed it was good for the heart. And so it was promoted widely before any human studies were done in the beginning. It's in baby food, it's an infant formula. I mean, they just put it in everything. Now, in the first video that I did on trans fats, even though it's not a main problem in our diet, they still stick it in from various ways and they sneak it in there. Uh, I think it'd be very smart to watch that video. I will put that up right here. Check it out.